Oftentimes it would get very discouraging feeling like, oh, I have to worry about plumbing. Oh, I have to worry about electric. No, don't worry about that yet. Just worry on this task right now, lay the floor first, and everything else will come in time. Hey, my name is Teresa, and this is my van, Rosebud. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. If you're self-employed, an artist, independent contractor, or running a small business, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform that will help you build a beautiful online presence and run your business. When I was 21 years old, I had never really left my home state of Missouri. But on a whim, I drove myself completely alone from St. Louis, Missouri to Reno, Nevada to go to Burning Man 2009. That was the first long distance road trip I ever took in my life. And after that, I was hooked. As often as I could, I would leave where I was staying and try to adventure somewhere new that I'd never seen before. In a few years, it had turned into 30 to 40 some odd countries and 50 states. It was hard at first, but I figured out that it was really simple for me to book creative gigs such as makeup jobs or photography work in different cities and kind of tour from place to place like you imagine bands or musicians tour. So I would book work in different places and eventually I was able to feed the machine and keep going and ever since then it's taken me all over the world. Most of my travel I'd actually done sleeping on couches or people's spare bedrooms and living out of my Honda Accord. Eventually I upgraded to a Honda Odyssey where I converted with a platform and a bed on the inside and after that, I realized it was time to really upgrade to something that felt like a home inside. There's a lot of quality of life upgrades that come with having a van like this compared to couch surfing or a minivan. I really like having my own space. There's a lot of details and there's a lot of style in it that really feels like me compared to a guest bedroom. Ultimately, my own space is perfect for the maximum flexibility for sleep, food, working, anything you can imagine that you might need when you're on the road full time. This is my Van Rosebud. She is a Mercedes Sprinter 2007 high roof model 2500. And I went with the Sprinters primarily because of the height as well as the reliability. Um, a lot of what I do in my job involves making very tight deadlines and going to certain gigs out and about. So I really can't be spending a lot of time messing with constant repairs and maintenance. It's a little bit more pricey, but at the same time, the reliability is what I was really looking for in a van. So on my roof, I have three 180 watt panels and a roof rack, and then I have two max air fans, one in the front and one in the rear. That way I can create a really nice current by letting one fan flow down and one fan flow up. It can dry things out, it can cool things down, and it's really ideal for a van that's so big. So in the front is my toilet. Magic. This is my toilet. I basically have a urine diverter from Separate. The solid waste goes into a bucket and a trash can that has cedar chips. I just open up this little latch in the front, check it, empty it out. I only really have to empty it out as often as I feel like I'm really using it. The cedar for the compost toilet, and also this is where I hide my induction stove top. I don't want to use propane because propane is dangerous and scary, so I can just draw from my electric and cook my food simply that way. The front is mostly decorative, but I wanted to bring a lot of elements from the main body of the van into the front. So that way it's a little bit more cohesive and it feels like the whole space is unified. Under here, I actually have a beautiful compass painted on the underside of the headliner shelf. And as I travel, I actually write down the different locations of places I've gone. I like to do that as a little sort of souvenir so I don't junk up the van with like bumper stickers. I like to keep the outside really clean and discreet. My headliner shelf, a lot of my reflective like window covers in here, and of course hats because I'm kind of a hat freak. I originally did this because I wanted a mirror to like do my hair and makeup in, but I wound up being like just a little too short, so it's just decorative now. Another van lifer turned me on to this incredible reflective insulating fabric that you can see right here. So these are some curtains that I just got from Target. I had to get two pairs because um, you essentially just sew them all together. But this, my friends, keeps the inside of your van so incredibly cool. You can literally stick your arm in through the front when it's closed and it feels 10 or 15 degrees different. The fridge! This thing is so cool. I don't really know what else to say about it other than I totally love it and it pretty much is perfect for enough food for one or two people. I barely have any food in there right now because I'm about to hop a flight, so I'm right at the end of my supply, but man, it is so spacious. I could fit my whole head in there, probably. I had a little bit of an issue with 
uh, one of my fridges I ordered, but their customer service is really attentive and they actually shipped me out a new fridge. So thanks ARB, you're great. So I'm gonna talk about my cabinets. These beautiful things are actually Ikea cabinets that I just decorated on the outside to make look a little funkier. Um, I didn't really know what I was doing when I got into this build, so it was the fastest way to get the result I needed. So I basically just bought the Ikea cabinets and sort of just made them my own. Um, this outside, if you're wondering, is wallpaper. This is just lath, and these have all been painted a little bit. But even still, the problem with Ikea is that a lot of times when you pull things out, you're pulling against the resistance of the latches that you need to install. So you have to reinforce the drawers with brackets. I've had the most success with the brackets because liquid nails wear out pretty quick. These beams are really cool. They are decorative, yes, but I didn't realize typically upper cabinets are actually mounted to the rooftop ribs of the van. It wasn't super stable and there was still a lot of wiggle. So I knew it needed a support from the underside. I was actually inspired by an antique buffet at my mother's house that had this sort of interesting arm uh, on the sides of it. And I thought, wow, what a really good way to give a little bit of support from underneath the cabinets where it needs it and still look really beautiful like you're actually in a real country kitchen compared to in a camper van. My fruit basket is really great, but unfortunately, if you install it this direction, it bangs against the wall. So I would recommend actually flipping it the other way so it doesn't quite do that. People ask about my backsplash all the time, but it's really just some really interesting tile that I got from Lowe's with black grout. My spice rack is magnetic from a company called Nice Spice. That's G-N-E-I-S-S, -S, Nice. If you write the nice people at Nice Spice with a custom dimension, they'll make one for you. So I obviously needed a really weird dimension for it to fit under my cabinets and they shipped out pretty fast magnetic knife holder that I definitely take down when I'm driving because nobody wants to get stabbed. So my outlet switches, like right here and then here with the lights, I basically just got them from a family member's estate sale. A lot of this like weird gaudy stuff is like in great abundance in the Midwest. So of course it fits my style really well. There's LED lights up back here that lights up the kitchen. And this switch gets these three on the top. This is my refill jug that when I go into a grocery store or a Walmart, whatever the case may be, I refill it in three gallon increments. So then back further, we have a 50 liter tank that I got from the olive oil source. You don't want weird plastic chemicals leaching into your drinking water. So I like the stainless steel for that reason. I have some cleaning supplies hanging out back here and then my gray water. This is a whale foot pump. So you basically just and water comes right out of the telescopic faucet. I refill this by taking this hose with this hose clamp and attaching it right here so it gravity feeds into the tank. You have to essentially pour X into Z so it can fill up Y down here. It takes a while, but usually I just kill time by doing other little cleaning tasks at the same time while the water refills. So in here resides a trash can and a good chunk of my electrical system. I cannot answer any questions about the electric because that was like the one thing that I was like not interested in doing as a beginner is like, the, no, no, that's dangerous. Over here beneath these cushions is where the batteries are hiding. So I have two lithium ion battle born batteries and they just feed through this little hole in the bench to the rest of the electrical cabinet in here. The reason why this toilet is elevated so high on the step that it is is because it sort of serves a triple purpose. So yes, it's a toilet, but it's level with my seat cushions. I can flip up this countertop and have a little bit of extra space to cook with if I need to. But what's even cooler is behind the driver's seat is a second cushion. So I can put a second cushion that matches this one on top of this countertop. So when I convert the bed at night, it actually extends two thirds of the bed into king size and length. So you can put your feet here nicely and spread out all the way along without being crunched up. These benches all under here are basically just storage. And this one actually is for my bed sheets at night. So I can wiggle this around and move it as need be to get in and out pretty conveniently. 
it's a lagoon twisting mount. It's easier to navigate around in a small space than something that uh, is straight up and down and doesn't really go anywhere. These are essentially Ikea mirror frames that I custom painted and sort of antiqued. But they're not supposed to be mirrors. They're actually supposed to resemble like ornate antique picture frames. I'm a photographer, so the joke with the back windows is that when I look out to scenery, it's supposed to look picture perfect. These are pieces of lath that were rescued from old buildings in St. Louis and underwent a little bit of a processing to make them suitable for the vehicle. When you're working with reclaimed materials, something I didn't realize when I made that choice was you really have to make sure that there isn't a single bit of mildew or mold or any kind of anything funky that releases spores or an odor. So I had to spray them with bleach very thoroughly in every single nook and every crack. I then shellacked them to seal in anything else. I made a beautiful tone while it was shellacked that really lends itself to the warm wood feel that I wanted to have inside the van. Here's the rear of the van. I have these sweet little bookshelves for my reading material and my notebooks. And this is all storage underneath the platform. <laughs> like a fan, a tiny propane heater, like nothing really to write home about, a yoga mat, just um, toilet paper. So in this bench, I have some like extra sweaters and like my jacket. But weirdly, I actually have a whole bench full of like wedding dresses, which sounds kind of weird, but I actually shoot lots of weddings and bridal. So this is sort of essentially a wardrobe uh, bench for when I'm doing like a styled photo shoot um, out and about with some couples or whatever. So I got about six wedding dresses in here actually. One of my favorite features of my van is this little hidden secret when you close the door. My cousin is a really amazing mural artist and she wanted to give me something personalized to put in the van. It took me a long time to think about where something hand painted could go, but I ultimately figured out that this flat canvas of the inside of the door was the perfect spot. And this is my mirror, it's just Velcroed on, so I can do my makeup and anything I need to do in that mirror. This is also hand painted by me. Um, just a little bit of decoration um, instead of something flat and kind of boring on the inside of the door. If I could go back to poor little me at the very beginning of this huge build, I would say, it's gonna be okay. You will actually finish. Don't be afraid to be a beginner. A lot of people never start because they're overwhelmed and they don't think that they know anything. But nobody's born knowing everything. Everything is learned or taught some way or another. And you can do it. Really, you can. I believe in being a beginner and I believe in trying new things. It accelerates your own personal power and it teaches you more about yourself. I'd never used a power tool before, I'd never built anything, and I didn't really consider myself technical or handy in any way. The biggest challenge was trying to see the big picture without feeling overwhelmed and overloaded. I had to break things down into very small incremental steps because I was teaching myself literally every single thing as I went along. I was really intimidated, I was really overwhelmed, but not only was I able to execute all of the tasks that the build really required of me. In a way, I realized that, hey, I actually have a knack for this and I'm able to customize things and I'm able to decorate things and make them really beautiful in a way that brings me a lot of pleasure when I look at them. It was really overwhelming without any information before, but when you take it in small steps like that, you can really surprise yourself with what you can do. Thank you for watching. If you're wanting to become location independent like Teresa is, maybe you're a photographer or an independent contractor, or maybe you have a small business, or maybe you're wanting to do one of those things. Either way, you need a website. And we recently just revamped our websites via Squarespace. Squarespace is what you need in your life because you need a website. You need a place to send people so that they can know what it is you offer so that you can continue to travel and make a living. And Squarespace from start to finish has got you covered all in one. Everything that you need from purchasing a domain to full functioning store, you can list unlimited amount of products that you want. It's got the e-commerce built into it. It's got templates that you can use so you can drag and drop and build a beautiful website. It's got a mobile feature so you don't have to do any adjustments between building a website for a desktop and mobile that's all built into it so it does it for you so you know that if you've got mobile users your website is going to be beautiful for them as well it's got everything you need if you're trying to start a business make it on your own as an artist or whatever you need a website so go to squarespace.com 
Start a free trial, build a website, see how it looks. And if you want to set it live, go to squarespace.com forward slash floor and get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain using code FLORB. Thank you. Big love.